Hey, and welcome back. Uh, it's AP Biology Unit 6, Gene Expression and Regulation. So, let's do it. So, we will go over each, unit, each of the subunits in Unit 6 and explain each of them step by step. But, before we get started, we need to go over some key scientists who contributed to our modern theory of genetics. First is Griffiths. He worked with uh, phenomia causing bacteria. Phenomia. Phenomia. Alright. Some strains virulent and others harmless. Virulent meaning that they cause virus. He put them in mice and saw that live harmless bacteria and dead virulent bacteria cause phenomia. Phenomia. I cannot say that word. Somehow, the dead bacteria were causing deaths. He concluded bacteria must have the ability to transform harm harmless cells into virulent ones by transferring some genetic factor from one bacterium to another, but he didn't know what the genetic factor was. His experiment was called the transformation experiment. Avery, McLeod, and McCarty actually found out that Griffith's mystery factor, air quotes, is DNA. They proved these transformations was due to the transfer of DNA. Hershey and Chase took it a step farther and supported the idea that DNA was the genetic material, not proteins. They tagged a bacteriophage protein code and DNA with radioactive material. It attacked a cell and they saw the radioactive element or the DNA was present in the cell. This means that it was the virus's genetic material that was inserted and caused the transformation. We also need to know about Chargoff's rule in which adenine and guanine equal cytosine and thymine which also are equal to 50%. Understanding this, based on this, he understood that adenine and thymine must occur in similar amounts and guanine and cytosine also occur in similar amounts. Up next is Rosalind Franklin. She used X-ray crystallography to determine the structure of DNA was a double helix. Watson and Crick then used the ideas of all of them before him and proposed that the double proposed the double helix structure. They are credited with the discovery of DNA. Finally, Messelson and Stahl actually proved that DNA replicates in a semi-conservative fashion. I'll talk about this more in depth later on. But it means that DNA splits into two strands, and then each of those strands is used as a template to make another half. In the end, you have two DNA strands, each with a part formed from the original DNA. Okay. Finally, on to the fun stuff, DNA and RNA structure. So the basic structure of a nucle nucleic acid. Um, DNA is a double helix structure with one strand running from 5' prime to 3' prime, right side up, and the other is 3' prime to 5'. Prime. It contains a 5-carbon sugar deoxyribose, a phosphate backbone, and nitrogen base. It has the bases adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine, also symbolized as A, T, C, and G. Finally, A and G are purines with two rings and T and C are pyrimidines with one ring. Adenine and thymine has a double hydrogen bond while cytosine and guanine have a triple hydrogen bond. The Tata box, as we will soon talk about, takes an advantage of the weak two hydrogen bonds. DNA is wrapped around histone proteins. This combination is called chromatin. Wrapping forms structures called nucleosomes. Now, the structure of ribonucleic acids, aka RNA. It's, um, it has the same basis, but with uracil substitute for thymine and the sugar ribose in the place of deoxyribose. Okay, replication. So in, <laughs> in eukaryotes, DNA is replicated semi-conservatively. As we said before, each strand serves as a template for the formation of a new strand. Okay, a quick warning. My uh, animations are horrific, but I hope it helps. Okay, so since DNA is crazy long, replication occurs in multiple regions on the chromosomes to make it faster. Uh, creatively, creativity, wow, this was named Origins of Replication, or ORI. In each ORI, helicase moves outwards from the ORI, creating a bubble shape. Now, we see DNA polymerase able to synthesize in the 5 to 3 direction continuously, since it moves along the helicase and splits more DNA. It continues to move in that direction, but DNA polymerase can only read from the 5 to 3 direction. Like we can only read left to right. If you can read right to left, kudos. Uh, so DNA primase places the RNA primers down for the polymerase to latch onto. Okay, so let's take a closer look to what happens in these areas with the RNA primer. So the DNA polymerase will place down the correct nucleotides with the RNA primer as a starting point. Then 
it continues this throughout the chain, and then we have DNA ligase, which zips through and replaces the primers with DNA and glues these fragments together. These fragments are actually called Okasaki fragments. And finally, the multiple arrays meet each other, and two strands are formed. Okay, so this is just a quick recap of everything we went through. If you need to pause over to look at it, be my guest. But I do want to discuss topes, somerase, and telomeres. Uh, these things we didn't weren't able to cover in the drawings. Uh, toposomerase lessens tensions on the tightly wound DNA by breaking, swiveling, and then rejoining DNA strands. And telomeres are protective ends. DNA loses its ends every time it replicates, and to make sure that these ends aren't um, needed DNA or co coding DNA, the telomeres protect the ends. Okay, so on to transcription and RNA processing. Transcription has three major parts, initiation, elongation, and termination. Let me skip through this and look at this first. All right, so initiation, elongation, and termination. In initi initiation, RNA polymerase recognize and binds to DNA at the promoter region. This is the region that tells RNA polymerase where to begin and which stra strand to transcribe. Transcription factors recognize key areas within the promoter, the Tata box, uh, like we said earlier, Tata box, uh, it's due to the repeating TNAs, which on with only two hydrogen bonds. So two hydrogen bonds are easier to break apart. This also leads to more mutations within those, but I ain't get ahead of myself. <laughs> and it mediates the binding of RNA polymerase to DNA. The completely assembled, uh, when it's completely assembled, it's called the transcription initiation complex. DNA transcription of the DNA template begins. Next, in elongation, the RNA poly polymerase adds nucleotides to the three end of the growing chain. RNA polymerase pries two strands of DNA apart and attaches the RNA nucleotide. The DNA transcribed is the transcription unit, each consisting of a triplet base pairs called codons. Last is termination, and um, this is when RNA polymerase transcribes the termination sequence of codons where mRNA is cut free from the DNA template. Okay, that was a lot of words. I do not think we would have got any of those. So let's look at this really closely. So you see RNA polymerase, and then attached to it are those little colorful dots called the transcription factors. Together, they're the transcription initiation complex. And then we see there is the Tata box. Let me get my marker out. Here's the Tata box. So the RNA polymerase will actually bind to the Tata box and then continue along the DNA strand, splitting the DNA in half and having RNA come off of it. And then again, it will continue to go in this direction, splitting apart more, and it will start closing off the DNA in this direction. And that's basically what you need to know. This is just a lot of works, words for no reason. <laughs> okay, so now is RNA processing. Um, so before RNA can actually leave the nucleus, it must be processed so it will work properly. A 5 cap is added. It consists of a modified guanine nucleotide added to the 5N. It also helps RNA strands to bind to ribosomes during the translation process. A poly A tail is added as well. This is a string of adenine added to the 3 end and protects the RNA from degradation by enzymes. And it facilitates the release from the nucleus into the cytoplasm. Introns, which are non-coding regions in DNA, are cut out by SNR, SNRNPs, SNRPs, small nuclear, nuclear ribonuclei, nucleoproteins, and splicesomes. Consensus, consensus sequences are boundaries between introns and extrons. They are bound by SNRPs. Splicesomes form around census, consensus and cuts introns and joins the remaining exons. Okay, so we did transcription. Now it's on to translation. The formation, the taking RNA and turning it into protein. So here we go. So here are some images I'm going to be referring to. All are important. In the top left, we see a codon chart. Codons are based on pairs of three bases. So to use the codon chart for, let's say, GUA, we start in the middle circle, find G, and then move out to U, and then finally A. We see this coding for valine, for val or valine. Some, something interesting to note is that GUG, GUC, and GUU also code for valine. There is redundancy, redundancy in the code. Remember, there's only 20 amino acids. So this allows um, lots of redundancy to occur because there's over 60 combinations with just three, or what do you call it, three codons. 
and each codon has four options, A, T, C, and G. So next on the bottom right is a ribosome. Uh, the ribosome is made up of um, bottom left, I think. Yeah, bottom left. <laughs> okay, so the ribosome is made up of a small subunit and a large subunit. The subunit grabs onto RNA and pushes it through. The large unit has EPA sites. It moves, um, the transcription RNA moves through the sites in succession. The large blue bent cylinder is tRNA. tRNA. The tRNA is attached to a protein. So, for example, this one is attached to methionine. Uh, on the bottom, it has anticodons. Anticodons bind to their opposite on the RNA. So the codons on the RNA bind to the anticodons on the tRNA. Then, as new tRNA come along, they add more proteins to the polypeptide chain, which will becomes longer and then finally translate it's translating finally translating the mRNA the picture on the right oh before we get there um, it the protein chain will actually end when a stop codon forms and you can see the top left again all the stop signs when those codons appear the translation of the protein will be stopped okay finally uh, the picture on the right is of a tRNA and all you need to pay attention to is the amino acid attachment site at the top and, so right here, and the RNA anticodon at the bottom. Whew. So just a few more things we need to cover. So GTP powers the process and enzymes join the tRNA to its specific amino acids. AUG is a start codon and codes for methionine, while UAA, UGA, and UAG are stop codons. Some tRNA can recognize two plus different codons. This is called wobble. Okay, so the stages for translation are, initi are initiation. It begins when our mRNA attaches to subunit and the start codon AUG is coded. In elongation, tRNA brings amino acids to ribosome and forms a polypeptide chain. And finally, in termination, where the mRNA strand is completed and the ribosome reaches one of the three termination or stop codons. Release factor breaks bonds between tRNA and last amino acids. mRNA is broken down. Okay, in particular, uh, when we're looking at regulation of gene, we'll be looking at the operon. As to the best of our knowledge, uh, it's the way we understand gene regulation. We'll first go over parts of the operon. First is the promoter, which is the nucleotide sequence in the DNA of a gene that is the binding site of RNA polymerase. It positions the polymerase to transcribe RNA. Next is the operator which is a sequence of nucleotides near the start of the operon to which a repressor can attach. The binding of a repressor prevents RNA polymerase attachment. The repressor is a protein that inhibits gene transcription. Next is the regulatory gene, which is a gene coding for a repressor that has its own promoter. Okay, so here is a repressible operon. In this case, the inhibitor stops translation from occurring. When there is a lack of tryptophan in the surrounding, there will be none to repress the operator, allowing for the production of TRP molecules. And this goes through it. And basically these TRP molecules would eventually bond back to the operator, causing the operator to go back and stop production. Okay, so an inducible operon on the other hand is repressed until a repressor attaches to it. Once it does, the operon will not be inhibited and the enzyme will be created. In the lack operon, when there's a surplus of lack or lactose, I kept using lack, um, it will act as a repressor and attach to the operator allowing the production of an enzyme that will break down lactose. Okay, so uh, I skipped over this in the beginning, but this is basically a review of everything we went over. Uh, the models, I hope they helped a little bit, but if you want to pause the video and look at this, again, be my guess. Okay, so, do to do, do. alright. So in eukaryotes, transcription factors and sigma factors cause DNA to bend and activate polymerase to transcribe regions. Uh, methylation can stop transcription of genes, so methyl can attach to regions of DNA, CPGs. These promoters contain regions with lots of these. The promoters have are called CPG islands. Their methyl methylation actually stops the transcription, and these are more stable and long-term, staying on the DNA even after replication. Actually, there was a study done where um, smoking actually methylates some DNA, causing cancer to actually be heritable. Okay, so mutations. Uh, mutations, 
So mutations are more common in regions with A and T since they break apart easier. Remember, A and T have only two hydrogen bonds, so in those areas, usually they're easier to break apart. A point mutation occurs when one base is swapped. A common example is sickle cell anemia, which is a substitution of valine for glutamine, and some don't do anything due to the redundancy in a code. An insertion, insertion or deletion causes a frame shift, where everything moves to the left or right, as in the example. Um, hey man turns into whatever that is. Um, and then um, as a nucleotide is inserted, it ruins the three codon re reading pattern for everything after that. And then a silent mutation has no effect. Usually the codon that mutated codes for the same protein due to redundancy. A missense swap for a new amino is a swap for a new amino acid, and a nonsense swap causes the appearance of a stop codon, stopping the transcription. Whew, biotechnology. Okay, so recombinant DNA means taking DNA from two or more sources and then combining them into one. It's used to produce protein products, like insulin producing bacteria. If you put DNA into that bacteria, it will actually produce insulin for you. You replace a non-functional gene with the functional gene by gene therapy. You prepare multiple copies of the gene itself for analysis, and then engineer bacteria to clean up the environment. These are all different ways you can um, use biotechnology. So some technique, the technique of gene cloning, first you isolate the gene of interest, insert the gene into a plasmid, insert the plasmid into a vector. The cell will carry the plasmid like bacteria. Must, you must make it competent first. Clone the gene as bacteria reproduce through fission, and the genes are cloned. Uh, and then identify bacteria with selected gene and harvest that. Harvest sounds like such a bad word. Oof. Okay, tools and techniques of recombinant DNA. So first we use restriction enzymes, which were discovered in the 1960s. They, are, they identify and cut out specific re recognition sequences or sites. Staggered cuts cause sticky ends, which form union with other ends. Gel electrophoresis, like shown in the picture, separates large molecules of DNA based on movement through agarose gel. Smaller pieces move fastest, farthest from the wells at the top. DNA probe is a radioactively labeled single strand of nucleic acid molecules used to tag a specific sequence. Uh, PCR, polymerase chain reaction, allows you to rapidly produce lots of copies of DNA by placing the DNA piece with tagged polymerase with nucleotides and primer needed, and it will work together to actually create that lots of copies. Some limitations though, info must you must know a lot about the DNA before doing this. It only works for shorter pieces, and then contamination is a major problem. Any piece of your own DNA or skin cells will actually ruin this. And then restriction fragment, fragment length polymorphism, RFLPs, is junk DNA occurred in patterns that are unique to each person. They form a barcode that can kind of be used to um, figure out paternity tests in criminal cases. Finally, complementary DNA. CDNA DNA is made using reverse transcriptase to take out introns and insert into bacteria. Ooh, that was a mouthful. Alright, thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked it, and if you found it helpful, please subscribe and leave a like. Thanks again. Good luck on your test.